Well, hello. If you can hear me, let me know in the chat board. I see there's one other person besides myself here. I can't see who it is, though. <laughs> if you can hear me, that'd be great to let me know so I can make sure my sound is good. Hello there. Hello there. Okay. Hello there. If you can hear me, go ahead and uh, let me know in the in the chat board. That if way, I can tell if my mic is working. I'm going to turn my, my volume down, so how are you today? Is it KMK Summer? There you go. Now, now I won't be echoing into the microphone. <laughs> We're going to get started in about four minutes. I know I'm going early. I know Intuitive View is going on at 9.30 tonight. I thought this was their week off. And uh, so I was going to, that's why I wanted to do it tonight, because it was their week off. <laughs> nice. Hi, people. Hi, John. Hi, Jenny. How are you? <laughs> We're going to be kicking into the intro here in about three minutes or so. And then, uh, then we'll be uh, moving on. Just a few of us here right now. Four. We'll see how it builds up. I'm hoping that we can get it, get it, uh, a nice group here tonight to talk, and uh, at some point I'd like to go ahead and uh, get a question from you to do a live channeling tonight. So if anybody has any ideas or for questions, uh, we'll be taking those later on. So there's something you might want to think about as, as we're going. Uh, about a couple more minutes here, and we will go uh, to cameras. I usually come on about a few minutes before just to make sure my mic is working. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you like the thumbnail. That is one of my old Renaissance Festival promo shots. And if you look at that hat, that hat's a, there's a funny story behind that hat. That hat is actually the national hat of Kyrgyzstan. And I, I got that hat while on a USO tour with a matching jacket, by the way, a uh, long like trench coat style jacket that's green velvet. Um, and I wore that hat at Renaissance festivals forever. And the funny part about it is when you look at that hat, I'm wearing the hat sideways, but I just thought it looked funnier with that hat, with the Renaissance clothing <laughs> to me, to me, it was just, it was just comic gold. <laughs> That's back when, I'm, when my beard was actually dark. <laughs> You got seven people watching. We're going to go live here in just a, just a minute or so. And we'll play the opener. Now, you guys, don't be surprised. The opener is my normal Live Loving live stream. Thanks, thanks. I'm proud of the hat. We were just talking about the hat, my, my Kyrgyzstani hat. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is a, I used to love doing Renaissance festivals. Everything else, that, you can't really tell, see the rest of that picture, but everything else that I'm wearing there I made, actually, the full Renaissance costume, uh, including the sword in my hand, which you don't get a real good view of. So, yeah, seven of us here. Good times in Renfair. Sarah, are you a Renfair person? <laughs> Which Ren Fair do you go to? How 
how to stop getting bit by mosquitoes. I'll t- I'll t- we'll talk about that just, uh, w- w- after we open this thing up. Oh, that's so cute. W- which which Ren Fair? Well, let's, I'm going to go ahead and play the opener and get into the camera so we can see each other. SoCal, I have friends who uh, perform at that one. One of, one of the um, groomsmen at one of my weddings was a man named Brian Howard. You guys out in SoCal know him as Brune. And here goes the opener. Welcome to the Live Loving Live stream with John Davis. And here I am, live, instead of talking over my funny hat. <laughs> um, yeah, that, uh, it, I, when I first started doing Ren Fairs, I just started traveling all over the country. Um, and um, I just loved, loved it so much that I had to make everything I wore because I could never find a costume that I thought really looked good. They all looked a little too modernly made. So I, I handmade everything I wore. Uh, how do I stop getting bit by mosquitoes? You know, the really weird thing about that is I used to meditate in northern Ohio down in a creek bed. And there was a, it had a, like a stone slab, like a beach that was all like slate stone. And I, uh, I would sit on there and I would just meditate. And when I was in the process of going into meditation, the mosquitoes would bite me. But once I got past the process and into the state of meditation, I never got bit. They, they did not touch me when I was in that, that, that state of meditation. So I was, it's really kind of an interesting thing. I don't really necessarily know why that is, but um, they, they totally left me alone when I was in, in the meditative state. Anyway, so how are you guys? I hope you guys are having a great summer so far. I know normally I do a Sunday live stream uh, every week, and then I took the summer off of live streams just because I'm still writing my book, writing, writing, writing like crazy, uh, trying to get all this stuff together. Uh, Tonight my goal is this, to give you guys all the time in the world to ask whatever questions you want and I'm just going to answer whatever you want, want to know, whatever you want to talk about. And at some point tonight, I'd like to re, you know, reach out to you guys to uh, choose a question for me to open up and ask, just to channel out. So uh, think about that as we're going along. But if you have any just normal questions you'd like to ask or any comments you'd like to make, just throw them right in the, ch- in the chat board. Uh, just a little... Uh, Little other information, the, the, the Super Chats are on if you want to use them, and there's a donation button in the link below if you want to use it. Now, you don't have to do any of that. I don't, I'm not asking you for that. I'm just letting you know it's there. If you find value and you want to help the channel keep going, that, that's there for that. People have asked me, what's the difference between the donation button and the Super Chat? Super Chat's a YouTube thing. They take 30%. The uh, donation button is a PayPal thing. They take 2%. So the channel gets more if you use the donation button and less if you use the Super Chat. But either one is greatly appreciated if you choose to do that. I am not, you don't have to. I'm not asking you to. I'm not trying to pressure you to do. Just letting you know it's there. Um, so uh, what questions can I start you guys out with? What topics can we get into uh, as we dive into uh, tonight's live stream? My, my whole goal for this thing is not to do a speech and not to do a, a – uh, a lecture of any kind, but to, to spend the entire time answering your questions. <laughs> and, we, and we've talked about the, the mosquito one. I'm not necessarily sure how to do that. I know that when I'm in meditating or in a completely calm state, they don't bother me. So what questions do you have? I'll just keep an eye on the uh, chat board over here. It seems to be in a moment of uh, stillness. Anybody got a question? I'm going to take a drink of water because it's what I'm made of. <sighs> now we have the cone of silence. <laughs> All right, so guys, um, one of the things that, that I think it's really important, we talked the other day about in one of the videos about the idea of what is reincarnation. And people have asked me that a 
more than you can possibly imagine. You know, what, what is reincarnation and, and why are there other people who, who say the same thing? The video I did yesterday, <coughs> I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I did it yesterday. I think it came out today. Um, that, that video it w is really, um, and talk, talks about my personal experience with that. But before I got to that point, people often ask me about, did you have experiences before your regression that had to do with uh, Jeshua? And it, when I was a child, when I was a, a young child, my mom came out the back door one day and I <laughs> was very upset to find my G.I. Joe up on a cross in the backyard. Um, I literally had crucified him and actually had written in Roman letters, uh, King of the Jews on, above his head, which I thought was very interesting. Um, but I was very much, I also declared at a very young age, I came, was talking to my mom and dad. I said, well, you know that our name Davis means son of David, and um, which is what they used to call Jeshua, right? It, 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 so it, there's all these little things that were happening. I also had, as a, as a very young child, I had a, uh, an imaginary friend, uh, and I called him Jimmy Garden. And um, I, I don't know what the name necessarily meant or means, but um, I often wonder whether it was a reference to the Garden of Gethsemane um, or it was just me not knowing how to say Jeshua. Um, but he, he was my imaginary friend, and he would talk to me, and, and I, would, I knew him very well. But one of the biggest, most, the biggest epiphany moments I had before my regression was I was 18 or 19 years old, and, and I was growing up in a, in a beach community, yes, in a beautiful beach community called Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. You may have heard of it because that's where Joe Biden's summer house is. Um, but I, I was growing up the, the son of a um, – oh, thank you, Zan. Thank you very much. Um, Oh, this is this is awesome. So I will I'll, jump, I'll finish this statement and I'll jump right onto yours. Um, the the um, my father was 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 a, was a a racist. He was a homophobic. He was a a typical um, small town plumber who was just not very open to anything but white people. And uh, I. Uh, growing up as his son, started to actually go down that same route. And then there was this one day that I walked into a convenience store and the cashier accidentally gave me $5, too much change. And as I walked out of the convenience store, someone said, um, I mean, I, I, as I walked out of the convenience store, I noticed that he'd given me this $5, too much change. So I, I turned around, I went back inside and I said to the cashier, I said, you, I'm sorry, you gave me $5, too much change, and I handed him the $5 back. And the next guy in line says, now there's something you don't see every day, an honest person. And when he said it, I felt this swell of loving energy that just filled my body. And I, and I, and I said, well, thank you. And I, and I walked out, and as I was walking out to the car, I could still feel the swell of loving energy. And I suddenly... Out of the blue, I said, Jesus, is that you? And it swelled again. And I had this experience where I felt this unconditional love. Now, I hadn't had my regression yet or anything. I had this unconditional love that hit me. And the next day, all racism, all homophobia that was, that was building in me was gone. It was gone gone. I didn't have any of that in my heart anymore. And that, I was 18 or 19 when that happened. And it was, it was like an epiphany moment. The next time I felt that feeling was in my regression when he walked up to me. I could feel his presence. And it was the same feeling. So I definitely was having experiences with Jeshua long before the regression. So, okay, so let's go over here to Zan. Is it okay to reject the Jesus being pushed by extreme right wingers? I find that Jesus putting off. I find that Jesus putting off. Is it okay to simply embrace spirituality and not Christianity? I love this question because Jeshua wasn't a Christian, and I and 
he didn't teach Judaism. He taught love, he taught compassion, he taught spirituality. And the interesting thing is that the, the, the right-wingers, the, it's, it's really interesting because the right-wingers aren't, aren't even teaching ancient Christianity. They're, te- they're actually pushing uh, 19th century Christianity. Um, for instance, the, the, a, lot of them, a lot of the right-wingers are really into the rapture stuff. They talk about you know, the Left Behind series and all that stuff. The rapture is not in the Bible. The rapture is literally something that was created by Minister Darby in the 1830s, and he, he invented it after hearing a dream of a Scottish boy, and then he took the word, he will gather them up, and then added this whole mythos around 144,000 souls that will be drawn up in, in the end times in the rapture. And so the, all the ones who are pushing the rapture right now, which are all the right wing, the right wing, are all pushing this this lie of this 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 modern experience of fear and doom and gloom, and I don't. Call, when you hear me mention the word Jesus, I have a hard time with saying Jesus because that's not who I. I don't. I don't associate Jesus with Yeshua, because it just the, the word Jesus is, has such a sound around it anymore because of the. Um, because of the modern religion is using it in such a way, you know, do this for Jesus and Jesus Christ. And I said something the other day on, on our in our membership group. Every Monday night we have a we have a big Zoom call. We we get on there. And we just open up and talk. And what was really interesting was uh, I made the realization. I said, you know, I, I've spoken with Hindus and Buddhists and Baha'i and Wicca and New Age spirituality folks. And the only ones who say don't use, quote-unquote, the Lord's name in vain is the Christians. But they are also the only ones who, when they get mad, they say, Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know, they're the ones who are, they say, don't do this, but I'm doing it anyway. So I would say it's quite okay. I don't consider myself Christian. I consider myself spiritual, not religious. And I think that that's a, I think it's a, I think it's quite Okay. But it really it comes down to whether you believe it's quite okay. Um, here, a Patreon member is about manifestation. There are so many different there are so many different techniques. It can be confusing to speak out loud, or meditate, or or image what you desire. You've spoken about. Um, so <laughs> manifestation. There are so many way, methods and modalities of manifestation. The biggest issue that people have with manifestation is they don't realize they are already manifesting because everything in your experience is a product of your belief in your creation. And so what, what you're actually talking about is the marketing of manifestation slash law of attraction because every moment of every day you are manifesting something because that's the way the world works. I am this, I am that. One of the things I talk about a lot is the idea of you can manifest trying, and that sucks. <laughs> you know, wanting, needing, hoping, trying. You can manifest those things. That's why I say you want to manifest. I'm receiving, creating, enjoying, not not needing, wanting, hoping, trying. Those things are creating. You know, the if you want to if you want to wipe out all of the thoughts of all the different methods and techniques, and they're all fighting each other. Think about this way. Whatever you ask in God's name is granted if you have faith. And Moses climbed the mountain, talked to the burning bush, said to the burning bush, what's your name? Everyone's going to know when I come down. And the bush said, I am. So I am wanting, I am needing, I am hoping, I am receiving, I am creating, I am enjoying. They're very different because one of them is, is really creating the lack and one of them is, is, is welcoming in something different. One of, the, one of the biggest issues I see with people manifestation is that they, they think it's going to go poof and magically appear. Even, even the, the, the law of attraction folks talk about, you know, if I'm a gigantic man, I'm supposed to say I am a thin man. Well, if you can't believe it, you can't create it. Whatever you ask is granted if you have faith. Shakespeare said, words without thoughts never to heaven go, 
right? You have to literally believe what you're saying. And if you can't believe it, you can't create it. So that's why I say receiving, because I, can, I know that I can be in this moment and I can, I can live in this moment of, of, of residual effect, but I can choose something new to come in. I can choose something new and I can believe it's coming in. And for me, it, 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 it always works because I, I have gotten to the point now where I've done it enough that I trust because trust is developed by results over time. So for the people who want to really get good at their manifestations, what they need to do is stop thinking about the big gigantic thing. Start just trying to manifest something tiny, like a dime or a feather or something tiny. And get to the point where you can trust the fact that you can bring that into your experience. And once you start bringing that into your experience, your trust and your faith will grow dramatically. And once it grows dramatically, you're going to find that you can manifest anything into your life. Now, some of the most amazing things I've manifested into my life. I said, thank you, God, for the uh, world travel I am receiving. Two days later, I was walking off stage at the Maryland Renaissance Festival, probably wearing that hat that I was wearing at the beginning of this thing. Um, As I walked off the stage, two men walked up to me and said, hey, we're big fans of yours, been fans of yours for years. Have you ever thought about doing USO shows? I said, I would love to do USO shows. He said, well, if you can get us your information, we can see what we can do. And we went and we took our, our, our information packet to their office in the Pentagon on September 10th, 2001. We we're inside the Pentagon dropping off our packet. September 11th, the Pentagon got hit. And all those offices shut down. Three weeks later, we left for a tour of 16 countries. So the, the world events were in alignment with the manifestation of me seeing the world at the same time, and it, they just meshed together because that's what I asked for. People think it's going to magically appear. It doesn't just magically appear. There is a time frame. In the, in the Bible, it talks about uh, the miracle. That one of the first miracles, the, his mother says to him, they have no more wine. And uh, the first thing Joshua says in that story, I wasn't there, so I don't know whether this is true or not, but, um, and I have no memory of it, to put it that way. John, I'm, John Davis wasn't there. And I don't know if John Johannes Ben Zebedee was there or not. But um, in the Bible, it says, that the first thing he says is, it's not time yet. And then he says to the, the servants, fill those jugs with water. And then they fill the jugs with water, and after some time, the jugs turn to wine. Now, think about what he did, thought, word, and deed, the three creative elements of manifestation. You think something, you say something, and you act in fashion, in belief, in faith about it. So he literally said, fill the jugs with water as an act of faith that they were going to become wine. And so he literally manifested that experience into the reality. And Notice it didn't go poof, wine was just there. It literally had a process of coming into the experience. And that's really the most important thing that people miss is the fact that they expect it to just be a a big light show of, of experience. And here's the next thing. In manifestation itself, manifestations happen by following the path of least resistance. Right? So... Some, if you're water flowing downhill, sometimes water, when following the path of least resistance, has to fall off a cliff. It has to, and sometimes, so it seems like a hugely traumatic event, but it gets them to where they're going. So sometimes it seems like you're not going to get something because of these traumatic events that are happening, but sometimes those traumatic events, traumatic events are the manifestation in process if you hold faith, if you hold the belief that, that you're still going to get your outcome. I hope that answers your question, (laughs) Kathleen. Got a little long-winded on that one. (laughs) Oh, well, Marcy, I'm glad you uh, you caught the story. (laughs) How many people on your Monday Zooms? You know, it's interesting. Uh, It it fluctuates. The membership site only has a dozen or so people, and we fluctuate. One night we only had two. One night we had eight. Um, it's It's a very small group right now, and what's lovely is 
we all have different perspectives. We all welcome each other's perspectives. Uh, we have one man who is an expert on, on the, the law of one raw channelings. And he and I have wonderful conversations because I, I respect his beliefs. He respects mine. And then we have <coughs> one woman who was raised an atheist and now she's becoming spiritual. And, so, and we hear her perspectives. Um, and then uh, you know, all different. We have some people who are just leaving Catholicism and they're trying to figure out their way. And so it really is a lovely, lovely uh, group. And that's, that's the, in our membership site. And it's, it's usually at 7 o'clock on Mondays. Uh, this week it's going to be either uh, Sunday or Tuesday because my, the, that 4th of July sale that I put up filled up my calendar in a big way. And I, the way I set my calendar up, I set it up so that I, I work from early in the morning to late at night on those days because the people in Australia and New Zealand uh, – they're 13 hours ahead of, of us. So if I do it at, at, at 9 o'clock at night, that's 10 o'clock in the morning for them. So, uh, so I do long days on, those, on the days that I do it. So, but uh, it'll probably be, this week, probably be 7 o'clock on Sunday because uh, I do have sessions on Tuesday. I could do it on Tuesday, but it would be after several sessions, so I'd probably be tired. Um, but yeah, if, if anyone's interested... Um, that that meeting is for all levels in the membership site, um, and the other thing that happens in the membership site is you get um, you get like fifty percent discount on private sessions for all all levels. You get uh, after you're in for a few weeks, you get a, a coffee mug, living loving coffee mug. You get a a, a poster of uh, the painting of Joshua. You, there's all these things that happen after you're there for a while, um, but uh, I tried to make sure that that. There was value in it. Um, you also get access to the healing workshop uh, and the uh, the uh, clearing your conscience. The basic workshop. They're actually what they are is they're mini courses um, and discounts on the on the other stuff as well. But um, anyway, so the, uh, what what next question do we have? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Should we take a quick drink of water? I, I want to kind of go back to the uh, the manifestation story for a second. Years ago, I was speaking at the Association for Research and Enlightenment. That's the Edgar Casey uh, campus in Virginia Beach, and I also spoke at their campus, in, their their group in Houston and in Portland, Oregon, as well. And it was about two months before I was leaving to go to that tour, to to that on the, and that whole book tour. But it was about two months before I was going to speak at the IRE for the first time. The main campus I was very excited about it. But I had a chip in my front tooth, and I was like, I do not want to go there with a chip in my front tooth. So I said, thank you, God, for the perfect tooth I am receiving. And the next day, I, I ordered a sandwich from Jimmy John's. And <laughs> it came. I bit into the sandwich. The tooth broke the rest of the way off. Now, in this moment, I could have easily said, well, that didn't work. But I believe what I manifest. Instead, what I said was, oh, cool. Where's this taking me? Because I knew if something happened to my tooth, it had to be part of the manifestation because that's what I was manifesting. And what happened next was, to make a long story short, the next phone call I got, so they, somebody said, you know, how are you today? What's going on? I said, well, my tooth just broke off, which I would never have said if, I, if it hadn't. And come to find out, I was talking to the president of an organization that helps Renaissance Festival performers get medical and dental work. <laughs> and she said, how much is it going to cost? I said, I have no idea. It just happened. She says, go get an estimate. Well, it ended up being, with the work that had to be done in my mouth, it was $3,000. And I came back and said, I said, it's $3,000. And she overnighted me a check for $3,000. And I got it like two days later and had my tooth fixed. And I didn't, I didn't have to repay it. That was the interesting part about the whole thing is that, that when I asked, I just believed it. You know, I don't believe in affirmations. I believe in declarations. And the reason I don't believe in affirmations is because the word affirmation means, literally means, 
I am securing something I have no confidence in. I have to affirm this to make it strong. That's what affirmation is. I just believe it. I treat manifestations like Amazon orders. I put my order in. I don't call them the next day to put the order in again. And I don't call them to say, hey, is it coming? I just put the order in and I trust that it's going to show up on my doorstep. And it does every time. 10 Minute Sanctuary. Hello there, 10 Minute Sanctuary. Have you ever met anyone that reminded you of someone in your past life memories? (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's a great, great, great story. Um, I was literally on that book tour and was in a metaphysical center in Maryland, and this man walked into the room, and I looked at him, and when I saw him, I knew he was the physical embodiment of Peter. And I turned to the person who was with me and said, that is Peter. That's who that is. That's Peter. And eventually they came up to meet me. We're talking. And and I just, I didn't, I don't believe in, um, I don't believe in validating people's past lives. Because there's so many, I I don't know what reincarnation is. I don't, I don't understand what, I don't even know what is it for me in my life. So I don't like to, va- people, people often come to me to be validated and I don't validate them because I don't, I, unless literally something huge happens. With this one, they, they weren't saying anything about it, so I wasn't saying anything. So I just mentioned, you know, in, 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 in the conversation, I, meant, I mentioned, yeah, the faith of Peter. And I just, I just kind of blew it off and just kind of ne- got the name in conversation. They sent me a private email the next day. She says, we heard you say Peter. <laughs> and they started talking. It was really interesting because I knew that he that he looked he looked and felt like the physical embodiment of Peter. She thought she was Peter. So I I, I don't know why it worked out that way, but I totally picked up on that. I've not heard of "Cry On" by Lee Carroll. Hello, Austria. <laughs> Austria. I uh, had a very interesting night in Bavaria one time over that part of the world uh, on a USO tour. I ended up uh, performing a, my comedy show at a base, and a bunch of uh, local Bavarian bikers were were on the base and, and saw it. And at, in the evening, we ended up going to the pub on base. Well, what I, what I didn't know is this pub was a was a um, like an NSA style listening secret super spy base right (laughs) and so i ended up going into this pub with these with these guys bavarian bikers and i walked in and for for those of you who've never seen me in person i'm six foot one and i'm a i'm a big guy i'm you know pushing 300 pounds i'm a big guy and i walked into that bar and this biker came over to me and he's standing six inches taller than me a gigantic guy and he walks over to me with a scowl on his face, and he looks down, and he goes, I love this guy. <laughs> and he pulled me in. He gave me all, all his patches off his jacket. <laughs> I, I was uh, embraced by the Bavarian bikers, and it was a lovely, lovely, uh, it was a New Year's Eve, too. We had a lovely time, and yes, he got me intoxicated. Um, <laughs> and I don't drink anymore, by the way. I haven't, haven't had a drink in 15 years. Uh, I'll have to look into the cryon thing. I've never, I've never even heard of it. Um, tell me a little bit about the cryon thing. I'd love to hear what, what, what this cryon channel. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting to me that all these people who are channeling right now. Um, I've told I think I've told the story before about um, the first time I ever channeled was was a complete surprise. <laughs> you, you take that one, huh? <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> um, I was in the middle of it. What I used to do in person healing sessions, where I would literally be holding people's hands, passing energy, and um, bringing them to their faith in healing. That that really is the 
the key to manifestation of a healing is um, they have to believe it. It's it's their faith that heals them. All you are is a is a pool of love for them to drink from to help with the healing and to put faith in. But they have to put faith in it. So I'm sitting there and I'm doing this and. The person across from me had a real hard time with the concept of healing, and she she herself needed a um, a big light show experience. And while I was sitting there holding her hands, I started to see what looked like an aura standing beside her, and then I started channeling something that was referring to itself as Gabrielle. I later, after much long research, discovered that was the ancient way of saying Gabriel. So I was saying the ancient name Gabriel, and it was meaning Gabriel. And it was a different accent. It was a different voice. It was all this stuff coming through. And I, the whole time it was coming through, I was experiencing this peaceful, loving bliss. And the second it stopped, I fell back into my fears and anxieties and it was, a, it was a horrible, I, I wept for 10 to 15 minutes afterwards, just crying because I was back into this feeling. That led to me uh, creating a small group back in the day. We had four or five of us who would come together and we would do uh, like monthly Gabriel sessions and we would just sit there. I would, I would go into state and they would just ask questions. And about the third month of doing it, Gabriel, Gabriel, stopped referring to John as in the third person, me in the third person. It started to blend us. He started to say, John I, John I. He would mix John I. And then when um, one of the people said, why are you referring to John as John I? He said, his response was really interesting. And I say his now because that's the way it was coming through. But the, res- the response was this. John does not have confidence or belief that he's worthy to bring this information through. So the personality is needed for John's mind to have something to be separate from himself to bring this information through. But the more we do this, the more John feels confident and has faith that he can just open up and let information come through. And over the course of the next month or two after that, the Gabriel personality just slowly faded and it became me talking. Now, the other interesting thing about it was when I, when the, when the Gabriel personality faded, all of the struggle dropping back into my fears and anxieties stopped happening because it was happening every time the personality would come through. And what I now know is that that, that was my fears, my anxieties, my self-worth, my self-doubt, all I, in the moments where I was handing it to this personality, it, I could feel the love and bliss. But when the, I let go of the personality, I had to deal back with my own fears and anxieties. And it all came back. And that was why I was having that experience. But once I got to the point where I could just open up and ask and just step aside and let whatever comes through comes through, then what happens was that, that it just became more natural. My natural voice came through. My natural um, tenor came through, and then it came to the point where I was—I had to like almost chase the words because they started coming in so fast. So that's why, if you ever see those videos, I talk really fast in them because of the fact that that's the way I'm hearing it. It's just pouring out of my mouth that way. So, uh, Texas—I'm going to be in Texas um, the 26th to the 28th of this month, actually. I had a, a friend of mine who, who has taken me all over the world, Egypt, Peru, uh, Israel, Greece, Jordan, uh, and he himself remembers being the Apostle Philip. And when he calls and says, um, when he calls and says, you, you need to come do this because I have this thing happening, it's usually pretty good. And he called me just two days ago and said, We're, you're going to Texas. So... I'm flying into Houston, and we're driving to Austin, and I'm flying from Austin back to Ohio uh, on the 28th. So uh, we're looking up here. Lee Carroll was an engineer and started channeling crying. I don't believe it. 
Didn't believe it for several years since then Lee has written 13 books. He, uh, you mean Lee didn't believe it for several years? Is, is that what you mean, Kathleen? Hi, Sugar's Mama. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Haven't seen you since our last live stream, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. So, hey, guys. Um, I I don't want to I don't want to overshoot uh, Kim Carey's um, live stream at nine thirty. So we have twenty five more minutes. Um, so I would like to tonight literally do a one question. Uh, open up and channel. Um, so if you've got a question, throw it in, in the chat board um, and let's um, see what happens. Hello, Beth Sacalato. It's good to see you again here. Um, you know what, Beth? It, when I had my regression, it was a very, my, fir- my first regression, it was a very troubling thing for me at first because I was still dealing with the fact that I was a Catholic boy. And um, I thought the whole thing was, I don't know. But I had had 19 psychics tell me about this past life. So I was like, I got I, you know, I, I can't have psychics tell me because the Catholic boy me didn't like the psychics either. So, <laughs> so it was like <laughs> I needed to have some science behind it. So I really did my research and I found a certified past life regression therapist. Nowadays, there's a lot of people who claim they do past life regression. I highly recommend that if you're having a past life regression, find someone who's a true certified hypnotherapist who does that as part of their service. Don't look for someone who's, who's pushing that, who does that as part of their service. There's a reason why. Uh, some hypnotherapists or, or hypnoregressionists will... will take you down, take you through this process, and then the, the way they ask questions is very much leading to answers. Um, a really good hypnoregressionist, hypnotherapist, will never lead you to it. What they lead you to is, you know, they, t- they lift you out of yourself, they put you into nothingness, basically, and they drop you down and let you fill in what's happening. They don't give you any external information that can skew the regression. They just, they just say, what do you see? And, and you know, what's happening? What's the next most important thing? They don't, they don't say, are you seeing blankety blank, blank, blank? They don't, you know, if you say in your regression you see Joshua, they, they will never refer to the name they will say, and 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 what is he doing? You know, they'll they they because they don't want to skew anything. They want you to have your experience. The next thing is, a really good regressionist will specifically take you to a very emotional moment. And the reason they take you to the the emotional moment is because they're they're literally gi- gi- taking you to something, and they're doing it in such a way that they're not telling you they're taking you to an emotional moment. But they're taking you to a moment that they think will be emotional. And what happens is you go and you have this full visceral experience of the emotion. And it really solidifies for you that you're really having an experience. So um, make sure whoever does your regression that it's someone who really knows how to do a regression. That's the only thing I would, I would highly suggest. Lee had a hard, hard time. Yeah, what sort of questions do people typically ask during a channeling? I'm not clear on what channeling entails. Okay, well here's here's what my channeling entails. I have come to the the realization for me that what I channel is not an entity. What I channel is is kind of what Edgar Casey said he channeled the Akashic records or the oneness of all. And so I really think what what I'm doing is just setting myself aside and letting information flow through. So uh, whatever question we ask, you know, you, you, you can ask anything you want. I try to stay out of political matters, especially because there's so many people who are doing that right now. But like sp- more spiritual matters are, are usually great ones for me. 
Um, but you know, I'll if it will, we'll, we will, whatever questions get asked over here, we'll choose one, and that's the one we'll do. Um, Sugar's mama, I have had a regression. It was eye opening. I could even feel and smell the heat of, of an orchid. Sounds odd, but it's true. Sugar's mama, when I had my when I had my regression. The experience I had was I could feel the wind on my back. I could smell the air. I could feel the wetness of the nets that I was holding in my hand. Um, I, I was I was in all forms physically there, but consciously split. I was I knew I was in a in a regression, but I was physically having an experience as real as being in this room right now, looking at this teleprompter. Um, that is a great question. Thank you, um, Master of Sanan- Sananju. Oh, well, uh, well I, I'll be Rima Williams for you, buddy. <laughs> um, when you channel, do you intentionally see imagery, imagery or is it more uh, intuition? Actually, it it's neither. Um, I very specifically close my eyes during channeling because I don't want sensory input. I don't want to see images. I don't want to hear anything. What I do is I, is I literally close my eyes, and I, I'm, I meditate twice a day. I meditate for, for 40 minutes twice a day. Um, I get up in the morning, and I say the word meditation because that's the accepted word. I actually call it sitting in love, but people haven't caught up to me yet <laughs> on that one. <laughs> um, but the idea of, of coming to that space of, of just sitting in love. So what happens is when I do the channeling, I, I literally, I do it just like I'm starting a meditation. I relax and let go. But before I do that, I ask the question. And then I, I, what happens for me is I close my eyes, I do the exhale, I get into that state, and then usually what happens is I hear a word or two will start. And whatever the word is, I've learned over the years to just say whatever it is. Because sometimes it makes no sense for my logical brain of what, what's being said. But then I find that that had to start that way. To give, give you an example, um, somebody I know the other day, <laughs> I did one of my, my private sessions for and in the middle of uh, writing um, her channeled message, the uh, <laughs> the lines from Princess Bride came through. <laughs> I wonder who that was. Um, <laughs> and it was the perfect it was the perfect line to come through because it was, it meant something something to her, right? And for me, it was I had a doubt, so I wrote it in the in the margins, and then I said, "Is that really it?" And I had to write it again because it was like totally there, but. When I do a straight channeling, I don't. I'm not writing it, so I'm not having that separation from brain to paper. I just, I just close my eyes and I come to the state and I just start speaking. And then what happens is it starts. The words just start coming really fast. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm literally just listening and, and sp- just trying to speak what I'm hearing as fast as I can because it's coming in really fast. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the channeling, it just stops. And it's what I would call the cone of silence. It just goes boom, and it's done. And I'm like, okay, is that is that it? And then then it comes out. So, (laughs) I I I you say you channel when you're I'm drunk. Weirdly enough, what I think it's I don't think it's weird at all when you when you give yourself something to put you in an altered state. It gives you the permission to to let information come through, just like the channeling of G- Gabriel. Gabriel, I was giving permission to channel through having that personality in the play. You give permission to channel with alcohol as well. Um, the interesting thing is when you when you give up needing the alcohol to channel and you come to the space of just letting it come through you, it is so much clearer because you're also not limiting what the brain can do in the process. Inconceivable. (laughs) Um, I just love the fact that you're a master of Sinanju. (laughs) Chun. (laughs) It was a 
<laughs> Joel Gray's character name. <laughs> um, uh, I can believe how much all my senses love felt. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank, thank you so much. That is, that is lovely. You know, one of the things that's so lo- lovely about this, wor- this work, by coming back to this work, is um, I do get a lot of real positive reinforcement. Um, probably a, a lot more than I did 10 years ago. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I had a lot more fire and brimstone thrown at me 10 years ago than I do now. Um, it's very interesting because even if you look at the at the – you guys, when you see the comments on my my videos, you don't see the dislikes because they don't show on, on the on the main page. Um, but of all the ch- all the channels, of all the dislikes that I get, it's like one dislike in every fifth video, and I'm getting h- usually 100 percent on the likes on all the videos. And um, th- it's interesting because I've always thought that if you dislike it. Are you in a, in such a state, a, a negative state, that you have to dislike it? One of the ones they disliked was the, was yesterday's, the one that I came out talking about why are what reincarnation and, and why are other people seeing John? Someone disliked that video, and I I often wondered why. I really wish that they would just if they dislike it, I wish they would just take the time to say why they dislike it because I would love to know the, have that conversation just to talk. So I could understand where they're coming from, and I can't really learn anything from their dislike, you know, except for the fact that they're just disliking for the sake of disliking. Um, oh, you probably yeah, and and Sarah, you not only do you remember better, but you don't have a hangover afterwards. <laughs> Are we all on Earth going to be experiencing a spiritual evolution soon? That's a that's a great question, and I, John Davis, has a, have an answer for it. That might be a, a great one for for channeling. I know a Je- Cheshire would hand, handle a narcissist with love. I'm just curious how he was able to to see past the human emotions he would have encountered. Well, I can tell you that directly. He's you know he taught us that. Everything was love and fear. Negative emotions themselves are just a fear. One of the things that he was very specific on was when you see someone being negative, ask yourself, what is their fear? He also, the other thing is, is all fear itself. First of all, all fear is negatively focused uncertainty because if they weren't negatively focused and they're positively focused, they wouldn't be afraid. So all focus is, is negative focus. All fear is negative focus. All negativity is negative focus. So he would say, well, you know, what are they afraid of? And what was so interesting is you would come to the space of what, it, where are they feeling that they're losing love? Where, Because it's all fears to him came down to the fear of not having love in some form. And so he would say, where, where are they? And what I found that when I started doing that, I started really helping people. Um, Years ago, I was directing the Tennessee Renaissance Festival, and I walked into the office, and my boss was screaming at my top performer. And I mean, literally screaming at the top performer. I was the entertainment director, so I was the middle management between these two. Really bad position to be in. I walked in, I saw them screaming. I knew that there was they were having a struggle of some variety, that they were both you know mad and angry, which is a fear of some of some kind. I turned to the bookkeeper. I said, what happened? He said, well, the musician falsified his Social Security number on the tax forms, and the IRS contacted us and told us to hold 30% of his pay until it's resolved. And today was his first check of two checks on this contract. So I knew from that response the musician's fear was the fear of him not having his money and his fear of not being able to you know, support his wife and support his family. and the fear, that, that all could be tied back to the fear of not living up and not being loved for failing. I turn to the owner and I look at the owner. He's mad and angry because he's afraid the IRS is going to come after him and that, you know, it's going to be a negative experience. What's a negative experience? Not loving. So he's afraid of not having love of some form. 
So I've got the two. So now my job is to alleviate their fears. Because as Yoda said, named must your fears be before banished as you can. So I, I've, I've now named what the fears are. I walked into the middle of the fight. The first thing I had to do was I had to take, the, I had to knock the fight down. So what was happening in the fight, I listened, they were throwing fault and guilt at each other. So I walked into the middle of the fight and I said, hey guys, I'm so sorry, this is my fault. And they both went, oh, and looked at me. And they, they stopped yelling like instantly. I said, yeah, had I had my paperwork done better, the, you know, I, I would have caught this mistake earlier and we could have solved this whole thing. And if this is my fault, I'm so sorry. So then I turned to the owner of the festival and I said, he has one contract with us, but he gets two checks. Can we give him his full check today and take the full 30% out of the second check? And the owner said, yes. And I turned to the musician and I said, you're going to get all of your money today. And tomorrow, I'm going to come pick you up, take you to the Social Security office. We're going to get a copy of your Social Security card. We're going to Xerox, you know, we're going to take a, a, we're going to copy it, scan it, and we're going to send it to the IRS, and you're going to get your full second check. The fight ended. What did I do? I took their fears away. I took the fear out of the, out of the equation. They both were very happy. That, uh, I ended up not working at that festival for much longer because I was going off to do other things. But he kept asking me to come back. Please don't leave. How can I get you to stay? How can I get you to stay? I said, I just, I'm doing something else now in my life. And uh, still to this day, I get messages from that musician as well. But the, the key was is to look at, look at any negative coming at you as a fear. And before you even react to it, figure out what the fear is that they're going through. Uh... I had to learn mindfulness and then have a regression. You need to, you, you need to get, to, one of the things that a good regressionist will do is they will meet with you. They will actually do a guided meditation on tape or on recording with their voice so you can train to their voice before you actually have the regression. And that was huge for me. I needed to, I needed to have her voice because when the regression happened, it was her voice that I knew and was comfortable and trusted. <clears throat> Question, what is all the purpose of all the chaos going on in the world right now? That's one I'm going to answer without channeling. Um, Socrates once said, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. When, when love and, and compassion starts to grow... The people who, who are most fearful lash out and they, they, they try to t overtake the world and they try, to, they try to submit people to their will. But the chaos right now is just the growing pains of a new world. And if you really think, if you really look at the world and you see all the turmoil that's happening, but then you back out of the turmoil and look at what the result of the turmoil is going to be. Right right now, Ru Russia's gas and oil is not getting into Europe because they're shutting them off. What's that doing? It's making Europe become a, a green energy state. They're doing more electric cars. They're doing more solar. They're doing more wind. They're doing more things that will keep our planet clean. Right? Um, NATO is a peacekeeping organization. It's all about peace. It doesn't, that's, you know, it's not about overtaking in countries and, and removing it, right? Putin attacked Ukraine. A couple things happened out of that. Finland and Sweden are now becoming part of the peacekeeping countries. Um, Ukraine, suffering, suffering. I said earlier in the, in the manifestations, sometimes the manifestations happen like, like water falling off a cliff. Sometimes there's a gigantic ca ca catastrophe that happens, and that is part of the process. Ukraine really wanted to be part of the European Union. Have always wanted to be. They're now becoming part of the European Union. They, you know, they, they want to become part of the peacekeeping nations. That's good. It, the process is happening. Um, the people who are who are most lashing out right now, um, causing the, all the turmoil in the world, 
are the ones who don't have grips on the people anymore. I, I, tru- I truly believe that, um, that Vladimir Putin will be gone because of the fact that everyone's seeing that, that this is not the way the world should work. So I really think he's in his last days. I, you know, all the stuff that's happening in the States right now, I really think that all the things that are happening are part of the growing pains of, of, a, of a new era. And there's another reason why I think this is because 15 years ago when I was speaking all over the country, people were much more shallow and much more superficial. And now I've come back to the spiritual work and everybody's changed. Every, everybody is more open. Everyone is more loving. And it's, it's so huge. It's so huge. You have to remember, I told this story to someone the other day. You have to remember that if, if I work in Cleveland, I would drive to Cleveland and back every day. I would probably pass a 1,000 cars on the road. And every day I might see a car on the side of the road with an accident. But tonight on the news, the thing that's going to be there is the accident, the anomaly. What should be the number one story is that 999 cars made it safely to and from their destination today. That's miraculous. That just shows that the world is 99.9% positive. But what happens is, is the negative, the fear-based stuff, just gets better press. So it's loud. It is the slander that they're spewing because they've lost their, their debate. That's my thought on that. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> well, it might be. There might be somebody else, too. <laughs> Ego. I got that. Thank you so much for the deep breath. I was struggling with the connection. I saw your video a few weeks ago about it. And ever since, I instantly feel my energy rise and chakras open. Yeah, it, the, that's why they call it the breath of God. Because God is at the bottom of every breath you take. Every breath you take. Um, I had feelings hurt today because someone was supposedly giving constructive criticism but the concern was regarding my personality. I, I left the meeting so upset and angry. So let's talk about that. There is nothing constructive about criticism. I don't care what anybody says. And if they were giving you criticism, it's because they were trying to put themselves in power. And the reason they were trying to put themselves in power is because they were mistaking power for love. And that is my take on that one. I'm doing my head bob for you. <laughs> um, uh, when the debate is lost... Yeah. Yeah. Same same th- sort of thing, yeah. Um, a- after Putin, the world, se- world does seem to be uniting. Yes. The people of the world are more connected now than ever before thanks to the media and the Internet. See how alike we all are ever before. And let me, and let me give you guys this one little piece of information. And we're going to go back to the question that was up there earlier because I think that's the one I want to channel on because we have to go soon. So we'll probably end on the channeling. Um, The um, let me let me think. Let me just think about this for a second. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to bypass that one. So let me just hit these other ones over here. 31. My niece says that Ukraine was making nerve gas, that they are the largest producer of chemical warfare items. I, um, I would like your niece to show us the proof because there's a lot of misinformation out there. It's like... When someone says to me, well, Hillary Clinton, blah, 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 she's this illegal person and she blah, 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 and they did this and they killed this person and they blah, 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 blah. My response to that is always this. Show me the proof that the that the investigators didn't have. The Republican investigators who investigated her more than 9-11 and Watergate combined because she was in, investigated five times more than both of those combined. 
and the and the Republican investigators found nothing. But if you're saying that she's a criminal and all this stuff, you must have evidence that you have not shared. So if you can show me that evidence, then I'll believe you. But but until you show me some evidence instead of hearsay, I don't even go there. So I don't you know I I can't say that I believe anything, with unless I see evidence. <coughs> Hi, John from Iowa. Hello, Larry. How are you? You, you are quite welcome, Sugar's Mama. Uh, TV and the Internet is uniting us. Oh, uh, there you go. So I, I have been to 30 countries around the world. I have asked the same question in every country I've been to. My question is, what is the most important thing to you? The number one answer in every country in the world is my family. The number two answer is my health. I have never heard anyone say, my president, my emperor, my politics, my country. I've never heard anyone say that. The most important thing in the world to everyone is their family and the people, and the people who represent love to them. That is the world we live in. The rest is all just marketing. Uh, yeah, and I, and I definitely don't trust Fox. <laughs> they have been caught with so many lies, it's crazy. Um, I like BBC quite a lot. Um, Sarah, that is beautiful. The one thing, the one thing about about God is God is love, and love is wrong in in no form. There is no there is no time when love is wrong. So, if 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 you're a lesbian, you know, gay man, polyamory, if that's your thing, as long as it's love. If it's hurtful or destructive, then it's not love. So if it's loving, then it's of God. So that's my take on that. So let me go back up here and find that question. I think it was a Kathleen question. Uh, where was it? Heading up into... I think it's in here somewhere. Huh. Oh, you know what? I think it was not Kathleen. I think it was Stephanie Alexander. Stephanie, do, what was your question again? I think that, I think, there it is. What is the purpose of all that? Well, that was the, that was the one I answered, so sorry. <laughs> That's not the one I was looking for. There was another one, though. Oh, here it is. Are we on earth going to experience a spiritual evolution soon? Let's channel that one. Does this sound good to you guys if that's the one we do? I, I want to go ahead and get this done so that you can get over to see Kim. If you're, I know some of you guys probably follow Kim, um, and, and I don't want to step on her toes because she has been such a lovely person to me. So, um, <clears throat> so the question is, are we going to be experiencing a spiritual evolution soon? I hear, I hear someone saying something before I go in. Awaken to the realization that you are already awakening. Awaken to the realization that you are already in flux. You are in motion. You are creating the movement within which, within which this new awakening is already occurring. There are those in the world who already feel uncomfortable because the awakening within them is showing. They feel like they're alone. They feel like they're here in this space, in this place, and it just doesn't feel right to them. It feels as if 
that it's it's not the unconditional love that they know and experience. They feel alone. They they feel in this space. The reason they feel that way is because they are awakening faster than others. They are seeing the the hurt and the turmoil around them, and they are creating this this turmoil within them because they know what they, is being created. They feel the awakening within, and they go within for their own shell because they're holding on to that space, that joyful, loving essence of who they are, the unconditional love of God. They are The process of awakening is happening, and all the bubbles of disinformation, all the bubbles of discord, all the bubbles of, of hate and fear are bubbling away because the veil is becoming thinner. The idea of the veil is the, is the construct of fear, and the fears themselves are separating. The fears are being shown the light. The ones that are pushing fear for power and control are being shown as people who are disingenuous, who are not creating from a loving space. They are, they are not the loving essence that they are portraying themselves as. And when they push these essence, they, they're doing this for power reasons because they have mistaken power for love and, and power is their God. They have set that space into themselves where they themselves think of themselves as almost godlike themselves. But they don't think of it as, as what is godlike. In their mind, God is a separate entity and they are separate and above all those around them. They're the ones who have set themselves apart. And what's happening is the people below them who have set themselves below them are, are realizing that they're not below them. They're coming to the space where the awakening is, no, I, I don't have to believe this. That is why you hear the words recovered Catholic because the people of Catholicism are waking up faster than, than most because they are understanding, they're realizing that everything they've been taught and trained in their life has come from this fear-based w- response of control and that idea of control is falling away when people come to realize the oneness of God within them that they themselves are part of the process they themselves are part of the essence of God itself as Yeshua said ye are gods and that being the case the awakening is not a search for something outside of self it is not something we wait for it is something we acknowledge that is happening and the more we acknowledge it the more we become part of being the love then you yourself are creating the essence essence. You yourself are creating the, the awakening. The idea of being that loving essence here makes the, makes the awakening happen faster. Reach out with yourself. Reach out with your love. Live loving. Live loving. As John says, live in a way that is such so loving, so bright that people take notice, that people become who, who they are because of who you are. You are the awakening. You are the awakening with all the people around you. It's not your place to change the world. It's your place to let people change themselves because of what you do and who you are. Be the oneness. Be the awakening. The awakening is already happening. People are already stepping forward in their world and loving in ways that have never been felt before. People are stepping up and, and creating this essence of love that turns people into better people, more loving people, more caring people people who can breathe, people who can exhale, people who can come to the space of their authentic self and be the love that they themselves are. And the more we step into that space of that loving self of who we are, what happens is the awakening becomes evident. It becomes evident because right now what you're asking is not a question of when does it happen. It's uh, it's the, the question of acknowledging it. It's a, uh, the question of seeing it. It's a question of taking the blinders of fear off and being it. And so you want to see it and feel it and be it. And so by seeing it and feeling it and being it, you are creating it. The awakening is now. It is not sometime in the future. The awakening is here in the I am moment. The I will be moment is nothing. The I will be moment is, is, is a place of confusion. It's a place of, of malleable thought. But that malleable thought, as it comes to your present moment, as it comes to your I am moment, becomes more clear, becomes more con, con, confined with the love. And... Once you realize that that word confined is, is not a limitation, it is, it is a, a expansion. It is, it is confining all things to their, their own wilderness to wander on their own. The fear-based people will be fear-based people always. Many will step out of that and come to the awakening. Some people will never come out of it. Some people will leave this world and experience the love upon the other side. But the physical plane here is becoming more and more loving, more and more caring. And as it becomes more and more caring, you will witness it. You will have the awakening that you seek individually. 
you'll start to see it around you. And the more you give love, the more you express love, the more you'll receive love, and that awakening will be will be very, very evident. And you will change the world in the here and now. And that is the cone of silence. <laughs> Um, let me just take a, a second here. What? <laughs> I don't drink. Sorry. <laughs> um, what you guys that when I, when I put the videos out, you don't see this moment. I usually edit this moment out because I don't like long moments of silence on my videos. <laughs> um, you don't have to retract it. <laughs> don't retract. Don't re- the loving offer of a beer is should not be retracted. <laughs> um, <sighs> should we still read the Bible and believe its teachings? It's not for me to tell you what to believe. It's not for anybody to tell you what to believe. But I would say this, whatever you're reading, if it's pushing fear, it's not of God, because God is love. I have found beautiful, loving things in the Bible. I have found great truth in the Bible. I've also found it in the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vakanamrut, the works of Shakespeare, the Star Wars films, the latest Thor, Love and Thunder, the worst film in history in my mind. Um, there was a there was a moment in there that he said something that was very profoundly spiritual and simple. God speaks to us in all forms. The Bible is not a bad thing, but but you just have to remember the Bible is a is a two thousand year old document that even the New Testament, the first the oldest book in the New Testament, is said to be written fifty years after the crucifixion. So you play the telephone game for that long and see how much of it's accurate. It'll be very interesting to see. Thank you. It is for my pup. Oh, okay. Uh, we go. What is the Christ consciousness? The Christ consciousness. First of all, <laughs> and, we'll, and I'm going to let you go in a second here. The, <laughs> the Christ consciousness is, um, I did a whole video on that. The word Christ means anointed one, so it's not it's nothing that Jeshua taught. Um, but I have heard in channelings the, the term Christ itself, and I believe it's it's just being stepping into your own creator divinity and becoming the the ye are gods that Jeshua talked about. It's stepping into the space. You know, he Jeshua said, "You are the children of God," and then he called himself the Son of Man. But basically, he was saying that to show you that he's no different than you are. He's a, he's a human. I'm a son of a man, right? And ye are gods. He was basically saying we all are, are part of the one source and part of the connect, connection, which is why he said the Father and I are one. He thought you and the Father were one as well. And the Father... Um, <laughs> a little, little climb in my throat. Um, if Jesus lived in a democracy or republic, would he have would he have voted? I love this question. Yeah, he would have. He would have voted for the the side, whichever side it was, that was promoting love. He would have been voting for the side that would have helped people. I'm a one-issue voter. I've, I have a son, and my goal is to give that son of mine a loving world where he has complete equal opportunity and everyone's treated equally, and you know he has good health care and he has good uh, educational opportunities and you know he has the chance to be the best he can be. I vote for the world my son is going to inherit. I vote for love. 
And so when I vote, that's the way I vote. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how he would have voted as well. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, yeah, that, that's a good one to retract, Stephen. I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> For me, anyway. <laughs> I don't like to talk politics on my stuff, mainly because of the fact that it's so divisive. And I think that focusing on the, on the divisions rather than focus on the, on the love it's just not really good. That was good, Steve. <laughs> it made it made me laugh, which is really good. Uh, is that Calais? Is that how you say that? I love I love that name. It's beautiful. If it is, um, this may have been asked. Are you familiar with Neville Goddard, and would Jesus agree with his interpretation? I I am very very familiar with Neville, Neville Goddard. Um, Le- Neville Goddard is very interesting because he he I think of Neville Goddard very much like Edgar Casey, in regards that he they both had their human filters that they were channeling information through, and like when you read when you read some of the fourteen thousand readings of Edgar Casey, you very quickly understand that he was a Southern Baptist, and you get the you get a lot of the 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 Baptist terminology wrapped around. But every so often he goes off on a tangent that doesn't match any any Baptist stuff. So he's bringing good information through. He's just, there's, some of the information he's coming through is coming through his own filter. Same thing with Neville Goddard. He comes through with, this, with his own filter, but he brings great stuff, wonderful stuff. And I believe a lot of what he's done is very true, but I think a lot of it is, is a little too, a um, little too Christian focused because I, I, I don't think any, any one religion can encompass God. It, God is too big and too simple for one religion to comprehend. And I think religions themselves sprang up to try to wrap a structure around something so simple and so loving. And in the end, um, they've kind of lost their way for their rules. Um, you... <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, you want to know what Steve said? <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, just to get Steve. <laughs> um, he, he said, so, so Joshua was a Republican. He was joking. <laughs> well, at least I hope he was. Um, <laughs> I wish they would do away with the party lines or put two. There's a lot in, into this. The, the whole re- Politics thing is there's a lot in this. I think they ought to do with all, all tax loopholes. I think they ought to do away with uh, the IRS, and I think they they could do that by doing all taxes at point of sale, and it all being a flat tax, because then it would be fair. We'd all be all paying the same percentage, and that would be a, a much easier way for us to, to do our our world and. Then, by taking all the loopholes away and taking all the all those things away, all the power struggle for money that that these people a lot of that gets goes away, and a lot most of what we're seeing in in the pol- political world is not about politics. It's it's about the money that they're making from the various things, and so I just think it. But I don't think it'll ever happen. And people say, "God, you sound like a libertarian." I I'm I'm my belief system is this. It is. Do something that makes everyone feel equal and loved and supported. And when you start dividing and you and they start saying things like, you know, all of we're not going to do. When they say things like, our only agenda is to not let the other side win again, then I think the politics has gone uh, off the deep end. Um, Edgar Casey, when he was awake, did not believe in what he channeled. He heard the recordings and. A lot of the information was not something he personally believed in. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I hope it's not selfish to ask a second question. What about quantum jumps or parallel realities? Uh, this is also something you've certainly got a lot, I'm sure. I don't have a lot on it because um, I, I, I look at this as God as being one. Is there a possibility for other realities? Sure. But 
and quantum jumps, I, I don't really, I think, I, I think that's kind of overthinking it. I truly believe what I heard in my regression to be true, that it's so simple that we can't grasp it. And when I hear someone say quantum jumps and alternate realities and all that, I just think it's overthought. I think that, that literally it comes down to love and fear. And let me tell you this. This is, this is the thing that really has solidified that belief for me. I studied, I studied all over the world. I've been to India. I've been, I've been everywhere. I've studied every religion I could get my hands on, every spiritual thought I could get my hands on, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Baha'i, Wicca, New Age, Dwayne Dyer, you know, all, I, all of it, right? The Bible, of course, the Koran, of course, but um, I have found that when I stripped away all the modalities and thoughts and, and techniques and methods, that's when I started having big spiritual experiences, when I got rid of the extraneous thought. And then I read the book of Genesis, and I saw why Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden, were cast out of paradise. Because they ate from the tree of knowledge. They got in their head and out of their heart. God speaks to us on our feelings, not our thinkings. So you have to come to that space of the feelings and, and stop looking for um, a truth that can be described in words because words are imperfect. I really, truly believe it comes back to that, that feeling essence. When he walked up, I'm pointing at my painting over there, if you get anybody that's over there. When he walks up to me on that beach, I could feel him. That was the key. <laughs> um, that, that was the key. And I think, that, I think that it really comes down to the other line that I have from my regression. When you seek a path, a path will be laid before you, but until you turn the path back to yourself, you'll never find the doorway. I think the, 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 the New Age quantum realities and all that stuff is just seeking a path. It's just wandering in the wilderness. And I think it's when you come back to yourself and you come back to that feeling within you and follow the loving feeling as opposed to the fear-based negative feelings, you're going to find all the answers. You're going to get all of the answers you've ever wanted. And you're also going to find that with God being one and all things being possible, the things that you're talking about are absolutely possible, but they're not necessary. And the more you strip away, the more you'll, you're actually connecting to source. <laughs> Go, John! Yeah! <laughs> We're getting there, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, this has been lovely, and I actually, I tried not to go over Kim, so if you guys want to catch the end of Kim, you'll have your <laughs> chance to jump over to her channel. Um, I'm going to jump over there myself and just lo listen to what she's saying. It has to be in the vibrations and frequencies. Vibrations and frequencies, just another word for feelings, in my, in my belief. I'm not asking you to believe anything I believe, and I never ask anybody to believe anything I believe. I'm just speaking my truth, and I respect your beliefs if, if they're not mine. And if you, if you ever come to our membership site and you go to the, one of our Zoom meetings, you would see I respect everybody's belief uh, completely, and we laugh and we smile with each other. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, Ki uh, Kim Carey, she has a channel called Intuitive View, and I, she, every other Thursday, she does uh, her her political reading. She's a she's a, a, a intuitive. She doesn't like the word psychic. She's a, she opens up. People ask questions, and she opens up and she answers. For all the political questions, jump over there and, and catch her. Um, um, well, thank, well, thank you, T Timothy. Um, but if you if you just search intuitive view, and it's spelled just like I said. You will find uh, you'll find her. She is a lovely, lovely person who has been very, very helpful on my journey. And thank you for the super chat earlier. Uh, every dollar that comes through goes right to keeping the channel alive. Um, 
you know, when I gave up my my career to do this, I took <laughs> about I now I live now live on less than less than ten percent of what I made before because I just really want to get this out. So um, thank you for all the for the super chat up there earlier, and um, if anyone finds value and 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 feels that they can or want to, uh, the donation button is underneath the the in the description box. Um, the difference between super chats and, and donations is. Uh, Super Chat, YouTube takes 30%, and donations, PayPal takes 2%. So the channel gets more money with the donation button. So, But this has been lovely. Uh, yeah, an uh, intuit, intuitive view. Actually, if you combine the word intuitive with view, so it's all one word, intuitive view, uh, with Kim Carey, yep. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. I hope you had a, a lovely time this evening. I know I did. Um, and I hope the channeling was, was good for you. It was, it was good for me. We should all smoke a cigarette now. <laughs> so, <laughs> good night. Good night, everybody. And, uh, and go out and, and, um, and live loving, love the world and the love, world will love you. Can you do the regression via zoom? I don't do regressions at all. Um, I'm not a certified hypnotherapist. Um, I would highly suggest that you find one and you go in person because they're going to be in the room with you and it's going to be uh, much more effective, in my opinion. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Peace. Good night, everyone. And I uh, love you all very much. And uh, I hope to see you again uh, soon. No, oh, I probably won't be doing another live stream until the fall because I am really seriously busy until then. Um, but then I plan on going back to doing um, them on Sundays again. The question I have for you guys is should I do them uh, at noon like I've been doing or should I push them into later in the evening? Uh, you can let me know either on the comments section on this video or, or you can email me at uh, john at john of new. Um, but that's uh, john of new dot com. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I would love to know because I want to make sure that it's going to hit the the correct amount of people or the most most amount of people so anyway you guys have a great great night and uh, i'm going to jump over and, and catch a little bit of, of kim carey i'll we'll, we'll see you later <laughs> bye thank you for joining us at the live loving live stream don't forget to like subscribe share and visit us at johnofnew.com